Three-dimensional volumetric video inspires now many who work in the field of computer graphics and the latest 3D technology. And while this has traditionally been associated with large and very specialized studios equipped with sophisticated multi-camera systems, it's exciting to see how, through creativity and resourcefulness, similar experiences are being carried out on a smaller scale by a growing number of individuals and teams. The principles and ideas behind producing dynamic and moving 3D capture can be quite simple in the end, but you still have to be able to somehow process and understand how to build something functional out of it all. So, if you are generally interested, and if you even happen to have such material, which comes from multiple real-world cameras, join in. Let's wonder together what can be done with it. Hello everyone, it's me, Olli here again. Recently, I've mainly been researching and working with virtually generated 4D Gaussian splatting datasets, which are generated on my own computer. I have previously presented methods that can be achieved with Blender software using the camera array tool that I have developed. And in them, I have shown how volumetric video models can be generated from images that have been rendered from ready-made animated 3D objects. But before that I had no experiments how it would work in practice with material generated with real cameras. Although the principles are of course the same, there are certain differences in the process. Luckily I was approached by a student from Belgium who needed help with this topic. Martin Arsen is a 21 years old student who studies audiovisual arts education at the Royal Institute of Theatre, Cinema and Sound in Brussels. And he shared with me his 4D GS dataset, which he is currently working on for his thesis. Martin told me that he hadn't had the opportunity to use a multi camera rig, but he had come up with a very clever idea to capture movement from multiple angles with just one camera. In his capture session, Martin has ingeniously turned his Ronin camera gimbal to his subject, allowing him repeat the same turning motion over and over again, so that he could change the position of his recording camera and capture that moving target from multiple angles. So in this way he was able to produce a video recording from a total of 21 different angles. And when he had synchronized each video clip precisely to the same timing, he eventually had a total of 72 frames long image sequences from each camera angle, which he then could train a Gaussian splatting model in the PostShot program. For training Gaussian splatting models from multiple frames, you can use command line version of the PostShot. But I have also developed a small batch trainer program for this step, which makes it easier and allows you to execute these comments via a simple graphical user interface. But here is the first step where comes the first problem of this process. If these images of each frame are given to the Beauchard program as is, then they will go through each stages of the Gaussian generation, where after the image analysis the camera tracking method tries to solve the position of the cameras based on the source images. And when camera positions are made through this method, it is based on computer vision's assumptions and therefore each model will be placed randomly in different places in the 3D coordinate system. So even if we eventually manage to get the PLY sequence out of the batch trainer, the end result will be unusable 
because models will jump and change their position in every frame. Therefore, the basic setups needs to be retaught. What information are we missing from the dataset? When we think about it, we realize that the camera stays in the exact same places in each frames, and only the content in them changes. So we would need to attach the same camera information to each frame. PoShot itself is based on the open source call map data, where the types and the location of the cameras and the familiar sparse point cloud are created. But it can also read a couple of others format of these elements as well. As I have already shown in my previous videos that presents the use of the camera array tool, when we have the decent call map data, we can skip the initial state of the process and move directly to the Gaussian training using that information. But how can we produce call map data if we can't export it out from the PostShot program itself? Although it would be a very good feature, and I really hope that at some point in the future the call map exporter function would be added to the PostShot. But the most common ways to show this are to use either the original call map program, but since it is quite complicated and demanding to use, I believe that anyone who is dedicated to this topic will solve this issue primarily by using the reality capture software. But there will occur the second problem of this matter. Reality capture is a very versatile photogrammetry program and is able to align and solve camera position very quickly. All we need to do is choose one of these frame folders and drag the images into it. It doesn't really matter which frame you choose, as mentioned, since the cameras are actually stationary, we'll be using the same information for all of the frames. Therefore, it is enough when we solve only one of these frames. The ability to export data in call map format was added to the reality capture software with the release of the version 1.5. So Martin had already figured this part out and made the call map file through this exact method. But still, there was a same problem. Even though he had generated the call map data and copied the txt files to each frame folders, the orientation of the PLY sequences was meshed up and the Gaussian models were jumping around like crazy. So at this point, I needed to take a closer look of those files. And since I already have some knowledge of call map file structures from my synthetic experiments, I could right away see and find out where the problem was. Although Reality Capture can export call map data as a properly named TXT files, their content is quite peculiar. The call map image txt file is basically like an Excel spreadsheet. These first few lines of the file specifies the rules and in which order the data should be written for each image. There is a lot of different 3D coordinates information and for each image two separate lines of important values are listed in there. When you're browsing around and look at the version that Reality Capture have made, there are an absurd amount of readings and even unnecessarily precise decimal numbers. But in the middle of everything, I managed to notice that the actual image file name that is being referred to is marked as just numbers. This naturally does not match to the original image file. So what can we do? If we look at all the PNG file names referenced in the callmap file, we see that in this respect the entire callmap file is broken and it will not work with the PostShot. Because in the PostShot calculation, if it is given incomplete or misspelled files, it will skip them completely and start the calculation without them which ends up performing the training exactly as I explained in the first problem. So instead of searching all these mislabeled image names and renaming them correctly from this txt file, it is just a bit easier to understand that 
at the moment reality captures call map exporter does not produce a valid txt files so instead we can use reality capture second method and export these necessary files using the csv format for camera positions and the ply format for the sparse point cloud once we have these two files we can copy and duplicate them into all these frame folders after this now the batch trainer will do its job much faster because each frame has the necessary information and all it needs to do is train the actual Gaussian splatting model for each frame. After a long rendering period we can finally take the finished PLY sequence into the post shot and see that the model is now moving correctly in its own place. This proves that the theory is right, and the orientation and the coordinates are now as they should be, and the model is no longer moving and jumping around. I think this is a super interesting topic at the moment. Michael Rubloff from RadianceFields.com recently published a great video where he talked about his visit to Infinite Reality Studios in the UK. In that video it was very fascinating to see what kind of a camera array systems they have and how they are able to produce volumetric videos at even up to 60 frames per second. It's amazing. And on top of that they have even open sourced this particular project and are sharing in the GitHub not only the VR experience files but also you can request from them the whole dataset, which includes also the pre-calculated PLY sequences. That's very cool and I think this is a valuable and very useful material if you want to go deeper into the 4D GS world. I'll leave all the links in the description, you should check them out from there. I would like to also thank the Martin for the collaboration of this video and providing me this nice little 4DGS camera gimbal experiment. I'm glad that we finally figured out the solution for it and now it works as intended. So what do you think about this? Have you encountered similar problems if you have tried to generate 4DGS data from the real world cameras? You can leave the comments below. And by the way, if you are interested in these small scripts and softwares that I have built, you can find them in my link page, where I have published them. Since I'm right now quite inspired of this coding thing, I have also made this little image organizer software with Python code that helps you to extract images from video files and makes it easier to put these datasets in order. And you can download it for free. So there is even more reasons now to check those links in the description. I think that this will conclude everything from this topic right now. And if you like this video, hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Thanks for watching.